So today we're going to talk about Green Flags Men Over 40 exhibit if they're high quality. Now, I've often shot videos about red flags. I probably have a video on red flags once a week, but we might as well start diving into green flags. I notice many of my contemporaries are shooting videos on this, so I thought I'd share my perspective on green flags indicate a healthy healthy emotions, healthy habits, compatibility in a relationship. They can be the qualities and characteristics or things a partner does or says that makes you feel comfortable, interested, and excited. So we're going to dive into this a bit. Now, when we think of green flags, these are the signs that a person is right for you. Okay. Now for each person, this is going to be different. So I'm just offering one narrative here. Now, the reason why I say high quality or well, we could re retitle this uh, green flag that he's the one, maybe that's what I should retitle this green flags. He's the one is that you are aligned with one another. You're aligned in your values. You're aligned in your vision. You're aligned in your lifestyle. You're aligned in emotional maturity. Are you aligned with one another? So I want you to start thinking of green flags as where are the two of you are similar versus where of you are apart. And with respect to the quality of this person, we're really talking about emotional maturity, emotional maturity. See, oftentimes we focus on green flags. Well, he has a good job and he owns his own home and he plans and pays for a date. So these are all gigantic green flags. And certainly those are good things to have for any individual, but there's so much more that has to do with your values, your lifestyle, and most importantly, the, this person's emotional maturity. I want to share with you a story, though, that uh, illustrates this from the other way around for a moment, a green flag I got from a woman once, and this was our first date happened to be Halloween. We went to a dive bar together because I thought it'd be fun to go to a dive bar and she was totally up for it. And we, she dressed like a go-go dancer. I dressed like a hippie. Um, they had great music and great band. And I paid for the first round of drinks and it was time for the second round. And she says, Jonathan, I've got it. And I go, no, no, I've got it. She goes, I've got it. And she goes, no, I've got it. And we got into a little pissing match. Now, some people might say, Jonathan, she was in her controlling masculine behavior. But what happened next floored me. And it's a green flag for her. And it's a green flag for me as well. So she put her hand on my arm, looked me straight in the eyes and said, Jonathan, I really appreciated that you treated the first round of drinks. Will you allow me to show my appreciation and treat you this round of drinks? Can you receive? In that moment, there were two green flags that happened there. First green flag for me was she demonstrated partnership skills. She demonstrated partnership skills. And the green flag for her was she said, can you receive? You see, a lot of men can be controlling. They need to control the environment. And she was actually testing me on some level to see if I was open to receiving. So these are examples of green flags we gave each other. Now, some people could turn this around and saying, well, he accepted her generosity. That's a red flag. But you see, I'm talking about those high quality types of people. I'm talking about those emotional grown up people. I'm not talking about people that are stifled in their lives. So when I think of green flags, I believe one of the most important green flag a person can give you is that they are intentional in the dating process. They are intentional in the dating process. And one of the aspects of intentionality, in my opinion, is dating one person at a time, dating one person at a time. I believe if two people like each other, they are want to get to know each other, that they should only date one person at a time. And not too long ago, I shared with a woman my dating vows. And I'm just going to give you an illustration of this. Something, by the way, there's a link below to get Jonathan's dating vows. And it goes like this. But this was, in my opinion, a gigantic green flag that was a red flag for her, interestingly enough. And the dating vows is an agreement two people make that when they're exploring a relationship together, that they agree to do this with consciousness. They state it to one another to declare something serious within three to six months. There's an agreement to monogamy. 
if they're having regular sex together. There's an agreement to not actively seek and meet and date others while they're in the dating process. There's an agreement to speak up if this isn't working for you versus ghosting, pulling back, or disappearing. And there's an agreement to invest regular time together. So with this woman, I demonstrated what I believe is a green flag. She saw it as a red flag, interestingly enough, because it seemed like I was pushing for exclusivity. See, folks, I'm here to say that the dating marketplace is so convoluted today. It's so chaotic. It is so dysfunctional. One of the fundamental pieces missing today is intentionality. And so by devoting a little bit of time to one person, I think is a gigantic green flag. I know many of you might see that as a red flag, but I disagree. See, here's the challenge with the over 40 category of people. Hence why I said this is for the over 40. Roughly 75% of singles are divorced. And divorce comes with it an unraveling of the tapestry of a life we had with another human being and feelings we might have in, with another human being. And there can be a lot of residue with those people in our past experiences. Those people in their 40s oftentimes have had more than three or four or five relationships lasting three months or longer or lasting six months or longer or lasting a year longer. Excuse my slurping, by the way. You know, it's interesting. My parents were married 66 years before my mother passed away. She had one man her entire life. Most of us in our 40s have had multiple relationships. And with those multiple relationships comes residue and wounding from our past relationships. So one gigantic green flag, I believe, that men and women in the dating marketplace can demonstrate is to do the work to heal from past relationships, to do introspective work, to do therapy, to do personal development, self-help, spiritual work, to do somatic therapy, just to name a few, to actually better prepare them for a, a new relationship. See, one of the big challenge we have, challenges we have in the dating marketplace is the fact is most human beings have weak emotional maturity and weak relationship skills. So a great green flag to experience from someone is if they can communicate in what's known as nonviolent communication. If you're not familiar with the work of the book uh, by Marshall Rosenberg, Nonviolent Communication, I highly, by the way, this should have been titled Compassionate Communication. You know, recently I had a woman um, accuse me of something, a friend of something that uh, and I don't want to get in the particulars out of respect for her. And I naturally got defensive. But what I realized later, and then she accused me of being defensive. And But what I realized later was she communicated in a violent way. And what I mean to say, an accusatory way. See, a green flag is when someone can express how they feel about something and not making you or the other person wrong. In this particular case, she made me out to be wrong. I naturally got defensive. But if she used compassionate communication, it would have been simply, I felt this way when this happened. That's a sign of good communication skills. When we come from the I statement and not the you statement, you did this versus I felt this way. A man who can exhibit compassionate communication is a great, gigantic green flag. Now, another gigantic green flag for those of us in our over 40 who are divorced is they take ownership or accountability in their past relationship endings and or failures. They take ownership on their part. You know, I've, exhibit, exhibit, I've, I've witnessed men and women alike who take little or no ownership on their part for the ending of the relationship. It's always pointing the finger at the other person. They're not looking at the three fingers pointing back to them. This is one of the reasons why we are in sea of dysfunctionality because most people don't take ownership or accountability for their choices. And it's always the other person was an alcoholic. The other person was a narcissist. The other person was selfish. Like, like, you, by the way, you have a role to play in this. And a person who doesn't take ownership in their part 
Oftentimes that's a red flag, but the person who takes ownership, I've often shared with my, with my audience, look, I was an unconscious husband when I was married. I was very unconscious. I was very self, I was very myopic, very self-centric. I take ownership for the ending of the relationship. I take more ownership than 50%. I think people who can take 50% ownership, and I know we you can all be saying, but Jonathan, him, 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 him. There's a part you played in it as well. And by the way, when a man is crucifying his ex-spouse, when he's, you know, when he's literally blaming her for everything, that's a that's not a green flag. That's a gigantic run forest run flag. Okay. You know, one of the things I recognize that it probably is a turnoff to most women. But I recognize that a man's vulnerability is his greatest asset, his capacity to be authentic, to be transparent, to be vulnerable, to share him his insecurities. I know it goes this, it goes against all the behavioral psychologists and everything, but I'm here to say it takes gigantic courage for a person to be vulnerable and not to complain, like for example, when a man is sharing his unhappy marriage and it's coming from a victim consciousness, that's not a healthy place to be, but that can feel like he's emotional. So you might be thinking, oh, he has emotional IQ. No, emotional IQ is victor consciousness, not victim consciousness. So if he can be vulnerable about his past relationships from a place of heart-centered sadness, that's a gigantic green flag. You know, I believe people that have a, um, a purpose in their life is a gigantic green flag. You know, I'm on, and I'm going to use me as an example, but I'm on a mission to to use the dating conversation to awaken human beings to personal development, self-help and spiritual work, what I call self-love. And I wrote a book about it called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? And there's a link below to get a copy of their book. When a person has purpose in their life, when they have a genuine purpose to, you know, not to be beyond something beyond themselves, to be a giver, to be, um, to be of service to other people, that's a gigantic green flag, a sense of independence within that space, a sense of sovereignty within that space, a sense of empowerment within that space. I think that's a gigantic green flag. You know, one thing I've noticed, um, you know, when you can actually I heard this on another YouTuber's channel. He talked about, I think, celebrating a person's wins. You know, I, I recently, uh, many of you know, I had a date with a woman and, and she um, uh, heads a yacht club. And I was like, I, I was celebrating her achievement. I think that's a very, that's a very, you know, that's a pretty awesome achievement to, 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 you know, help run that organization, for example, and to celebrate it, you know, for another human being, I think is a gigantic green flag, just to name a few. Now, certainly when somebody respects your boundaries, when they, they honor your standards, particularly in the dating marketplace, see, many people don't even know what their standards are because many, many of you watching me don't know the type of relationship you're looking for. I, I give you my standard just to give you some context, but I think when you've established your standard, and my standard is simply, I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal, our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. I think when someone establish, when you establish your standards, and they respect that standard. They appreciate the boundary you may set around that standard. Those are all gigantic green flags. So I said earlier that green flags are a reflection of shared vision, which I just established my standard, which is a vision, and finding someone who shares that, that's a green flag. Your values, and I think it's important to have conversations, have political conversations, have religious conversations to see if you line up with your ideologies with one another. 
Because what you're looking for within a green flag is an alignment with another human being on values, on vision. And I said, importantly, I said earlier, because we've spent the last few minutes talking about emotional maturity, I'm talking about a green flag as someone's lifestyle that's actually has, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? Has a lifestyle that can actually lean into a day in, day out relationship. Like these are the types of things we should be asking. But Jonathan, I'm just supposed to sit in my feminine energy and let the man lead and entertain me and romance me so we can fall in love and then find out six months later we're misaligned with one another. <laughs> I mean, do you realize how many people do this back, you know, backwards? We put the romance and entertainment in the beginning, and that should be reserved for a relationship, not as an entry point in relationship. I'm here to suggest that your whole job of dating, it's a the purpose of dating is a vetting process to find where you're aligned and misaligned with one another. And by the way, red flags and green flags simply mean, all flags simply mean ask more questions. Be more curious. Use what my friend Bennett calls appreciative inquiry. Whether it's a red flag or green flag, I'm inviting you to go, if something feels off, ask a question about it. Try to investigate it a little bit more than the surface. See, a deal breaker is a deal breaker, okay? That you don't even have to worry about it. But a red flag or a green flag simply means get to ask more questions because some red flags, like what I shared in the beginning of this conversation, that woman who was looking for a man who could receive, to some of you that might be a red flag, but it means asking more questions. And just like a green flag, we have an, what is, what is intimacy? Intimacy and trust in particular. Intimacy is into me, you see, and trust is, does this other person have my best interest at heart? The way we're going to get to those places is by going deeper than the surface that most people date today, which is more entertainment and romance-based and not building trust and intimacy with one another through vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. So I invite you all to make a list of green flags you're looking for in a guy, which is an alignment to who you are and what you want and start paying attention. But even more so, ask. Ask questions. That's how we get to know another human being. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Follow me on Instagram. Get my dating vows we just talked about all listed below. And we're going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic job the bear of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, pet a teddy bear or pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye.